Guys, pow! Welcome to 180 Drums. We were gonna have coffee, instead we decided to play really loud, raunchy drums. Cause that's what we do. Mark, you're the man. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks, man. So good to have you Great on. Great to hang with you. Now, dude, what are you teaching us today? Because you have a good story of a gig not working out in your favor. Well, the foundation is all about preparing everybody to be able to play on big stages. Mm. Essentially taking you from being in the practice room to the club to the arena or stadium. Those are the gigs that I am used to doing. That's what I want to talk about. Now, there's a lot of foundation that goes along with that. Yeah. So I want to start by talking about my horribly failed audition when I thought <laughs> that I was ready to get in an arena band. I was young, had the opportunity to audition for a band called Bad English, comprised Come of the on. members from the band Journey and John Wade and Ricky Phillips from the Babies. And I was rocking. I'd been in original bands. I'd led my own original band. I'd done a little teeny bit of touring, done some session work. I'd go and I'm going to nail this sucker. And I failed it miserably. I had overwhelming stage fright. And I was rushing horribly, which is the last thing a drummer auditioning for a world-class band should ever do, is to rush. Actually, the last thing a drummer playing in any band should ever do is to rush unless you are trying to do it. It's not about speeding up or slowing down. That is okay. That's musical, as long as you know you're doing it. So, I failed this audition miserably. I went home, crawled in bed with my rock and roll boots, my rock and roll jewelry, my rock and roll outfit, pulled the covers over my head, and I nearly suffocated. Then I threw over the covers and said, wait a minute, I'm not one to wallow in self-pity, I'm resilient. So I had to figure yeah. out what I was going to do. So I made two promises. The first one is I promised myself that nobody's going to tell me I'm speeding up or slowing down unless I want to do it. And the second promise was I was going to bust my nerves in submission. So mm. I've written a book about overcoming the stage fright. What? But the foundation for building my internal meter, I knew I needed to master my internal sense of time because I never wanted that to happen. When we're playing on big arenas, big stadiums, there's a lot of pressure. There is. Face it. I play with Pink. Now, Pink does aerial ballet stuff. She could die if somebody messes up a cue, literally, because she's flying around. If the cues are off, if anybody yes. loses confidence, anybody loses time. So the time and the foundation is critical. So I found in LA which this, this course called the Rhythm Course, which isn't there anymore. Huh. Now, one interesting thing about the Rhythm Course is I was ready, man. I was ready to practice with that metronome. You know, it had been my, I was afraid of the metronome after that audition. Yeah, walk, uh, us, walk us through that moment. So you're, you're playing these songs. What goes south? Well, I'm playing the songs, and I'm speeding up so badly without even knowing it. I just was so nervous. And then Jonathan Kane, the leader of the band, who's actually the keyboard oh. player for Journey, he stops the band, and all eyes are on me, right? Yeah. And he reaches down into his bag, and he picks it up, and it's in his hand, and it's the metronome. Oh. And he sets it to the tempo of the song, so the red light is flashing, and he just tosses it at me and says, watch the light. Oh, and man. so I put it on the ground. I'm trying to desperately watch this light, trying to get my bearings. And it was a miserable failure. But it was actually the best worst day of my life. Yes. Because that's what inspired me to realize the foundation really is in developing that internal meter, to mastering that internal meter. So fast forward, when I'm in this rhythm course... After a few months of being in the rhythm course, I haven't even touched the drum set. I haven't touched the drum sticks because yeah. the path to mastering one's internal sense of time begins with clapping. Yes. And so the goal was simply to start at 120 beats per minute, move down, move up, move down, move up, and be able to clap at all tempos for a period of one minute with the metronome clapping with a metronome and not be able to hear the sound of the metronome because you're so synchronized or entrained with the with the you know the sound of the metronome that the clapping is literally canceling out the sound of the metronome. So I want to give you a few examples of that today because this it seems like kind of a mundane exercise but trust me if you can clap at all these tempos and initially you can subdivide when you get to the slower tempos but you want to be able to actually do it and feel all the space. So let's start with 120 beats per minute, Amazing. shall we? Yep. And you want to internalize the tempo a little bit. 
Now, we're not going to do it for an entire minute, but we wanted to yeah. see how close we can come to canceling out the sound of the metronome. That was awesome. pretty yeah. dialed in. Now, we keep it going. I want you to see what it feels like when you fall out, when you fall ahead, when you fall behind. <laughs> and we've been that guy or that girl. We played with that guy or that girl on yes. guitar or on bass. Here's the other key, and you can tell your bandmates this. Most of us think that... It's the drummer's responsibility to set the time for the band. It's not. It's everybody's responsibility. So I inspire you to inspire your bandmates, your girlfriends, your wives, your lovers, all the people to get their internal sense of time. As we say in any business, timing is everything. Yeah. So I started at 120, then I would go down four beats and go up four beats. And I finally went down to as low as 30 beats per minute. Now, I haven't done this in a while. I'm going to challenge myself. Now, what you want to do initially is you want to um, subdivide. So you're going to divide it into 16th notes. And if you take 120 divided by 4, you're at 30. And subdividing is okay, but eventually I really want you to be able to do all of these tempos without subdividing. Because here's the magic. What happens is you learn to honor the space between the notes. The definition of a great groove is when everything is even, so you honor the space between the notes. It's more important what you don't play than what you do play. Yes. And also, you learn how to listen. You become literally hyper aware of everything that's going on around you. It almost becomes meditative. Because you're starting with clapping, and eventually you're adding the drum set. You know, simple beats, simple fills, more complex beats, more complex fills. I'm stalling because I'm avoiding this 30. Let's do it. it! I love it. Okay. What I would do is I would have a, t a stopwatch in front of me, and every time I'm off, I would start over again. Or I'd wow. look at the place that I was off, and that would be the minute. The goal is to be able to do it for a minute. Yes. And right then, I wasn't subdividing, because I'm trying to actually do this, <laughs> feeling all that space. But that's why this took me months. And because if you can do it at 30, then 240 becomes easy because the trick to playing fast is articulating things very, very slowly. That is the key. So let's hear 240 now. 240. See, by this point, it's like 240. It seems a lot easier. Do you want to try it, by the way? Sure. You want me to try 30? Uh, well, why don't you try... Let's try 80. 80. I love it. Getting put on the spot, guys. Well, put on the spot. we could do it too, then we could do it together. I love it. Because then so, getting a few people doing it at once, then it really becomes quite a challenge. So what you're suggesting is that students sit there. I love that idea, by the way, of letting the, letting the stopwatch just run. And yeah. if it's at 12 seconds and you messed up, you're like, okay, yeah. now it's a minute 12. Yeah. We're going to minute 12. And you well, no, the, then you, st you start over. Start over, yeah. right? So, and the thing is, that you're, remember, you're working down to these tempos, so it's a gradual yes. process. You're starting at 120, moving down. You can move down in groups of four and groups of two, and you gradually get down to yes. it. And again, it's going to take you a long time, yes. and that's okay. I mean, if it takes you only a week, then you're way cooler than me. But it's going to take as long as it takes, and it's about doing it every day. And you can just designate how long yeah. you want to do it every day. You want to do it for five minutes a day? You want to do it for 20 minutes a day? It can literally become meditative. I tell people, I joke around when I do my seminars, I say, you know, for those of you that meditate, try clapping at 30 beats per minute for 20 minutes. You'll find inner peace, I promise. <laughs> so it depends on how motivated you are. And the slow tempos, 
That's where the magic lies. That's hmm. where you find the secrets of the universe. And will you really develop this confidence of this internal meter? But let's try, what do you, he said, 80? Give it a go. There you go. At the end is when you really dial. I it really in. dialed that. I started breathing. I relaxed yeah. a little bit. You breathe and relax, and you can hear like when we're locked in, you can't hear the metronome, or you're so tight you might be able to hear the slight resonance of the metronome, but the attack of the metronome is gone. Yes. And it's a yeah. weird feeling when they call call it burying the click when you're playing along with it and you can't hear the click at all. Yes. So put on eighty. I'm going to play a little bit to eighty. I'm going to bury that click. It's funny, I'm actually, I've become more comfortable playing than clapping. Yes. But it's an idea of relaxing. And also, I'll never forget, man, when I was freaking out about playing with the click, I took a lesson with Joe Percaro, one of the great masters, uh -huh. his son was Jeff. And Joe, you know, I was telling him about being freaked out about the click, and he gave me such amazing advice. He said, hey man, just act like the click is just a really good percussionist with really good time and you're playing with like a guy like playing cowbell in time. Because the reality is, I played with Lenny Castro. Huh. I played with great percussionists, Kevin, Kevin uh, Ricard, um, Machito Sanchez. These guys have rock solid time. No kidding. And I was, did an entire tour with Lenny Castro and he, I called him Buddha. <laughs> you know, he took, would hit that, that cowbell, boom, boom, boom. Boom, and it made so much sense, and it caused me to relax. Because wow. sometimes there's stress associated with, especially if you're doing this exercise, it gets very stressful. So the idea is I want you to be able to relax, act like you're jamming with your favorite percussionist. Pete Lockett is another one. There's nice. so many great percussionists. And just relax and have fun. And I guarantee you, what two things are going to happen. One is you're going to get more confident playing yes. with a click yeah. and really locking in. Like I tell my students, because uh, I try to train my students to be able to be session players. And when you're playing a session player, I want you to be as accurate as possible. Yes. Now, a lot of times, they're cutting up the tracks in Pro Tools, but I always tell my students, I don't want them to have to cut up the tracks. Because when I do drum tracks, and I've done a thousand drum tracks for people, it's one of the ways I make my living, I cut different takes, and then I give them alternate fills, alternate grooves, and so they can literally just chop and paste, and they don't have to error correct it because I am right with that click. Yeah. I want to make it easy for them. So the goal is all comes back to being able to play with music. This is the means to the end is being able to be a great musician and play in time. So relax, enjoy it. When you're doing this, if you get frustrated, stop. Just stop. Relax. It takes time. It's going to take as long as it takes. And feel free to email me at info at markshulman.com, M-A-R-K-S-C-H-U-L-M-A-N. Let me know how you're doing. Any questions, I answer them. Jake is my soul brother. We are coffee <laughs> soulmates. So Come anything on. I can do for you, I'm happy to do for you. Peace out.